In this section, we'll look at two other 11AX enhancements that improve capacity and efficiency, long OFDM symbol and 1024 QAM. The OFDM symbol was originally designed with indoor Wi-Fi in mind. In an indoor environment, multipath reflected RF signals were expected to come back very quickly. The pre-11AX OFDM symbol was composed of a data portion that is 3.2 microseconds long with a guard interval of 0.4 or 0.8 microseconds. When using Wi-Fi outside, because of increased distances in echo and reflections, multipath presents a problem. Long OFDM symbol helps to correct this problem. Let's look at how OFDM long symbol improves outdoor operation. 11AX maintains the same channel bandwidth as 11AC, such as 20, 40, or 80 MHz. However, it increases the fast Fourier transform, or FFT, size by a factor of 4. This means there are four times more subcarriers in a given bandwidth, resulting in a four times reduction in the subcarrier spacing. So we go from 312.5 kHz to 78.125 kHz per subcarrier. This gives us a frequency domain efficiency and capacity increase as it provides four times more tones or subcarriers to allocate to multiple users. However, it comes at a price since the narrower subcarrier spacing is more sensitive to frequency offsets, phase noise, and sampling clause offsets. In the time domain, this translates to a four times longer OFDM symbol. The data portion has been extended fourfold from 3.2 microseconds to 12.8 microseconds, and the guard option can be extended from 0.4 or 0.8 microseconds up to 3.2 microseconds. This allows us to cover both indoor and outdoor operation. For indoor operation, the OFDM symbol can still use a 0.4 or 0.8 microsecond guard interval, which gives us time domain efficiency due to the reduced guard interval overhead. And for outdoor, the long OFDM symbol of 12.8 microseconds combined with a 3.2 microsecond guard interval addresses the long delay spread in an outdoor environment due to multipath reflections, allowing a more robust outdoor operation. The outdoor operation is handled by using a new extended range single user packet type. The diagram at the top shows the OFDM symbol for 11G, N, and 11AC. The red portion represents the preamble and the yellow portion is the useful data portion composed of OFDM symbols. OFDM works by transmitting data for 3.2 microseconds and then transmitting a guard interval and then repeating the process again. The guard interval is either 0.4 or 0.8 microseconds. A 0.4 microsecond guard interval is called a short guard interval. So this means that OFDM has about a 20% overhead rate, so effectively 20% of the airtime is wasted. Why do I need the guard interval? Why is it 0.4 or 0.8 microseconds and not 0.1 microsecond? When wireless transmits a signal, it reaches the destination receiver directly and it also gets reflected off walls, ceilings, and other obstacles before reaching the receiver. The reflections are called multipath. How much multipath I can tolerate is dictated by how wide the red portion is. The Wi-Fi standard was originally developed for indoor use. When indoors, my multipath is not going to be very long. If I speak to you directly, you hear it as well as reflections off the wall but you don't notice it because the reflections are short. If I go outside and shout in the middle of a field, I'm going to hear an echo because my voice will reflect off objects like buildings or hills much further away. So the multipath is much longer outdoors. The multipath tolerance we put into the Wi-Fi standard through the red 0.4 or 0.8 microsecond portion says that my reflections are expected to come back very quickly. So how do you make this work better outdoors? To do this, we need to extend the red portion to make it much more tolerant to multipath reflections. You may say, well, we already do Wi-Fi deployments outdoors and it seems to be working. The reason it's working outdoors is because we mount our APs on poles or buildings that aren't too tall and they can find the signals. But if you look at a cellular base station, they are usually at the roof of a tall building. By putting it at the roof of a tall building, I can cover a much larger area, and that's why the cell phone can pick up a signal that is coming from a faraway base station because it's mounted at a taller height. We are not able to do that today with Wi-Fi, and the LT standard can tolerate the reflections that are coming from a faraway mountain. The way we can make it work is by looking at the bottom graph. Here we quadruple the duration of the red portion. 
Instead of 0.8 microseconds, it is now 3.2 microseconds, which means it can tolerate reflections coming from a much larger distance. The yellow portion has been increased fourfold to 12.8 microseconds, which gives a lot of outdoor multipath tolerance and keeps the overhead the same. The yellow and red portion consists of one OFDM symbol. This increase in size is called long wave OFDM symbol. As a result, it's better for outdoor deployments, which means you can now mount your APs at a much taller height to cover a wider area. How does this longer OFDM symbol affect indoor deployments? We know that indoors we don't need a long guard interval, so we combine the best of both worlds. We use the long wave OFDM symbol, but keep the red portion short for indoor use. This decreases the overhead because I have a much longer yellow followed by a small red. Originally, I had 3.2 microseconds of data followed by 0.8 microseconds of overhead, which represented a 20% overhead. Now I have 12.8 microseconds of data followed by a 0.8 microsecond guard interval in my indoor 11AX deployment, which means my overhead has come down to less than 10%, so I get a throughput benefit by doing this. Our 11AX APs will adjust this automatically. The guard interval depends on the environment the AP is installed in. Our APs are optimizing numerous parameters. Beam Flex Plus will try to maximize the throughput first, along with determining which modulation coding scheme to use, whether to use multi-user MIMO or OFDMA, and which size of guard interval to use for this environment. When the AP is mounted outside, it will try to maximize the throughput first. It will first try 0.8 microseconds because this will maximize the throughput. If it realizes that this doesn't work as well, it will try the 3.2 microsecond guard interval. Another 11AX enhancement is 1024 Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, or QAM. Quadrature Amplitude Modulation is a highly developed modulation scheme used in the communication industry in which data is transmitted over radio frequencies. By varying the amplitude of the signal as well as the phase, Wi-Fi radios are able to construct a constellation diagram that shows the value associated with the different states. In the animation, this is showing a 16 QAM signal. For wireless communications, QAM is a signal in which two carriers or, or two sinusoidal waves shifted in phase by 90 degrees, a quarter out of phase, are modulated, and the resultant output consists of both amplitude and phase variations. These variations form the basis for the transmitted binary bits that result in the information we see on our devices. By varying these sine waves through phase and amplitude, radio engineers can construct signals that transmit an even higher number of bits per hertz or information per signal. Systems designed to maximize spectral efficiency care a great deal about the bits hertz efficiency and thus are always employing techniques to construct ever denser QAM constellations to increase data rates. Higher QAM levels increase throughput capabilities in wireless devices. The new Wi-Fi 6 or 11AX standard incorporates 1024 QAM with each symbol, a point on the constellation diagram, encoding a larger number of data bits when using a dense constellation. This translates to better throughput at the physical layer and 25% higher capacity with 10 bits per symbol versus 8 bits in 256 QAM. More bits equals more data, and the payload delivery of data is more efficient, like having a bigger truck. With over 30 billion connected things expected by 2020, higher wireless throughput facilitated by 1024 QAM is crucial to ensuring quality of service or QoS in high-density locations such as stadiums, convention centers, transportation hubs, and auditoriums. Applications such as 4K video streaming are expected to drive internet traffic to 278 petabytes per month by 2021. 11AX also introduces two new modulation coding schemes, MCS-10 and MCS-11, which will most likely be optional. Due to the denser constellation, a 3 dB tighter EVM limit is applied. So we're looking at a minus 35 dB EVM versus a minus 32 dB for 256 QAM. 1024 QAM can only be used with 242 subcarriers or tones or larger. This means that at least a full 20 MHz channel will be needed for 1024 QAM.